MSNBC host Joanne Reed and a Tiffany Justice from the conservative group Moms for Liberty exchanged some barbs on air the other night when discussing book bans in schools. The question I'm asking is, what is the expertise that you have and other Moms for Liberty advocates have to decide that a book, an award-winning book like All Boys Aren't Blue isn't oh. appropriate for students to read? What, what is your expertise? What a tragic story of a young man who's anally raped by his adult family member. So you mm -hmm. have incest, rape, pedophilia. Joy, you said you'd let me answer, so sure. I'm going to answer Please for do. you. Please um, do. In what context is a strap-on dildo acceptable for public school? Just let, I mean, that's my question mm -hmm. to you. Tell me what the context around the strap on dildo or the rape of a minor child by a teacher. Hold on a second. No, no, no. You, no, wait, no wait, we're talking on. about no, public no, no. school. One, one moment. All right. So now you've asked me a question. Sure. Well, gonna, I'm going to answer it. Okay. Well, who is the main character? What's the name of the main character in All Boys Ain't Blue? Are Blue? You're asking me right now. You just gave me very specific information about this book, so you're pl presenting yourself as somebody expert. It's the gentleman. Hold on. The main, to, who's the main character in the, the book? The main character is the author. Who's the, what's his name? George, I believe, is his first because name. Because you're giving me very specific information that is presenting yourself as an expert. You're asking me to remember the name of an author. The you name just of remembered the author very specific things. Joy. Here's my We're question. We're talking about Here's my question. You didn't answer my no, question. No, no, no. I'm, gonna, I'm going to answer Great. your question. Great. I would love to hear that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't know that that seems like an unfair gotcha for me that she can't name the character in the book. I mean, she's objecting to um, the content. I don't know this book specifically. Um, the one with the uh, with the the sex toy, the dildo that someone is performing oral sex on, is an image. I believe that's with the for the book. Um, the book is called This Book is Gay, and maybe the book Gender Queer also have that. That All do Boys not Aren't feel Blue appropriate is for a, uh, I think the point that uh, Joanne Reed is getting at is that it's a biographical book where someone talks about the sexual abuse that they experienced as a young gay man at the same age that kids in school are ostensibly reading this book. And I think the question is whether or not, given that regrettably we live in a society where kids are abused, they go through these experiences, and there's been so much testimony from kids that say, hey, I didn't realize this was wrong, I didn't realize what I should do in this situation, I didn't realize how to advocate for myself until I saw my experiences elsewhere in the world in print or whatever it is. You know, the question is, why do you think it's so inappropriate for kids to have that outlet and for them to be able to perhaps advocate for themselves because of these books if, in fact, they are experiencing those sorts of things? And you can feel differently about it, but to, for the context, also Moms of Liberty has been pursuing these book bans across the country that have reached as far as trying to ban material relating to Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King, banning books uh, that are considered to be the foundation of American literature, like The Bluest Eye and Beloved, all, both of which um, feature scenes of rape as part of the lived yes, experience. I've, I've not read The Bluest Eye. I have read Beloved. Um, I mean, I would say, w w could you agree that not all of these books are appropriate for all ages. Sure. That doesn't say to me that they should be banned, but that um, parents who don't want, in particular, the, the book with the very graphic sexual images in it necessarily available in the in school classrooms, they're public schools, that parents want to exercise some control over what kind of content. And I think everyone, we could save ourselves a lot of headache if we would just say maybe one or two, not books of substantial literary value like the works of, um, of uh, Toni Morrison. Morrison should be in, it should not be banned. Although again, not appropriate for, I wouldn't want <laughs> third graders or fifth graders necessarily reading those books. I think they're perfectly fine for high schoolers. Well, they're not assigned to um, third graders and fifth graders, but they are in the library and I guess they're, they're not chained up like deodorant in a CVS. So, I mean, conceivably, a precocious child could always wander into a different part of the library. I was a precocious reader, and I remember loving reading the more adult-leaning or teen-skewed teen uh, Beverly Cleary books that were available, because they were exciting and fun and more challenging and th you know thicker than the books that were in my own age section. And there could be someone who said, oh, Brianna, at 11, you shouldn't be reading about high school kids hooking up during one summer on the, the beach in South Carolina or whatever the heck her little teen you know, romance books were about. But you know, I, I do think there's a, a bit of an overreaction going on here, and the focus seems to be more on whether or not 
these broader state-level forces or national-level forces, national groups like Moms for Liberty, should have control rather than really talking about whether parents in the communities that they're getting involved in actually have concerns about their students and why this can't be handled on a more local level. Look, if a well, given I mean, school wants to ban Sula, ban Tony Morrison, I don't like it, but that's a very different conversation than what Moms for Liberty are doing where they're going about the country. Here, here's some examples of what they've been up to. Um, they tried, uh, they had problems with a book about Galileo, um, because he was persecuted by the Catholic church. And they said, they issued a spreadsheet that said that they couldn't read about that story without counterbalancing praise of the church saying, quote, where is the hero uh, of the church? There was an attack, as I mentioned before, on, um, uh, uh, um, stuff around, um, the civil rights movement. There was a uh, article about police brutality against civil rights demonstrators that was criticized for being too negative in its view on firemen and the police. Well, I'm sorry, that's historical record. I didn't tell those police officers to spray black people with fire hoses and sick their dogs on them. But when, when people push back and say these conservatives don't want to teach history, it's because of instances like this. You can't teach history if you don't want to ever acknowledge that police officers or fire no, officers or somebody in the United States of America was the one enacting the racism against black people I don't care about and others. They don't want to teach sex. <laughs> they, want, they don't want to teach sexual tactics and behaviors in images to children. That's what the parents group is saying. They don't think those couple books belong where children can get them. Um, no, we should not be banning books about Galileo or books of literary merit. I mean, I don't support any of these bands anyway. I don't even like care really, but I, I can't, um, I, if parents do care, I think they do have a right to shape their child's education, to have input in the school system. And I, I can't just accept the like, well, they just have to be mad about it. They just have to complain about it. They can't do anything. There was a uh, an objection to a book about seahorses, apparently, because male seahorses carry their eggs, and they found that uh, images of the mating cycle of seahorses was to, I guess, upsetting to their view of gender. I mean, what is the, okay, who is saying, I like. <laughs> this is all, uh, this is some random, out of the, the Daily Beast reporting. Is this, is this their. What do you mean? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are unreasonable complaints associated with members of this very vast national group. Um, I'm. That all sounds ridiculous to me. If they're trying to take books about seahorses off shelves, I would, uh, I would uh, oppose it. I mean, I would ultimately say that um, that is that is bad and is a waste of time. But I, I don't find the the more popular complaint that some of these books are a little graphic for kids to be that without merit. I mean, I do I do wonder this. My parents knew what I was reading in school. My parents were teachers and they checked in and frankly, there were things that they weren't happy with because of the politics of that, that were not my parents' politics, weren't my family politics and that were too conservative. And the goal was to manage your own house and teach your children what they want, you want them to know. You're responsible for your kids' education ultimately and you can weigh in on and tweak what they learn in school. And it's tough, but we live in a society. We live in a community and everyone's not gonna have perfection in terms of what they think their kids are going to be taught in school, unless, of course, you take them out and you homeschool them. You can obviously shop schools around if you're privileged enough to have enough money to send your kids to a private school or privileged enough to be able to pick up and move to a different district, which, of course, is very expensive. But for the rest of us, we're going to have to all just go to our school board meetings, talk to each other in the community, and try to come to some mutual understanding. I don't know that forming national groups that are targeting a specific kind of ideology from a 10,000 foot level, as opposed to letting discrete communities resolve things for their own, is ultimately gonna be for the betterment of a child's education or society at large. I have a teacher friends that are currently teaching Giovanni's Room. I hate to break it to you, but it's a classic Baldwin novel about two gay men spending a lot of time in an apartment together doing, doing what you would expect. Um, I, you know, teaching uh, Coetze, The Disgrace, which very prominently features a gang rape. Um, these are, these are, this is literature. These are classic novels that deal with difficult themes. People have complained for years, some liberals complained about the use of the N-word in Mark Twain. You know, people are going to have different thoughts about it from different political uh, perspectives, but I do think that we should tr have a little bit more yeah. trust in teachers and trust in students to be able to take on the difficult subjects sure, they're going to encounter soon enough in the real yeah. world. Well, this right, but even with that, I wouldn't want to throw I wouldn't want to throw 
that kind of weighty content at a, I, I think it's absolutely with merit and should be taught and should be available, but I wouldn't throw it, at, you know, there has to be enough maturity of the student before they're ready for that kind of material. I mean, Huckleberry Finn, this stuff is actually, it's like children's. So, you know, do we have to wait till college to read Mark Twain? I mean, I read it in high school and the inward stuff was kind of uncomfortable. I think there's some teachers handle it better than other teachers, but I don't, I wasn't scarred. I, I don't, I don't think that we should be denying lodge, uh, denying knowledge or suppressing speech or suppressing books or, you know, banning books, I think is the, the headline story here and the much bigger deal than what discrete differences you and I, or whatever parents might have about the contents of said books and how to manage that. All right. More rising right after this.